Thank you everyone for joining us today. We've had a fantastic response to our senior leaders interview series. And today we have had the pleasure of being um, joined by an international uh, professor, Mary Lyne Philippe from France. Mary Lyne is in New Zealand attending the International Food and Agribusiness Management Association Conference in Christchurch this week. And I was there as well. And I have to say, some of the findings from the younger generation, unbelievable. Um, yeah, really, really um, insightful. Anyway, we've got the pleasure of being um, joined by Mary Lyne today. She's an active member of the ICA board. So that's the International Cooperative Alliance board and the International Cooperative Alliance Europe body as well. So today we're going to discuss the topic of European cooperatives response to their sustainability obligations. We will hear from Mary Lyne on how European and French cooperatives are facing the global challenges arising from climate change and delivery on their sustainability responsibilities to achieve ESG and SGG requirements. I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting session. So thanks so much, Mary Lam, for joining us. Thank you very much. Kia <laughs> ora. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor. Thank you, Russ, for your invitation. I'm very pleased to be here and to share with you some um, point and some information and uh, I want very, very well uh, improve my knowledge in uh, New Zealand uh, uh, agriculture and uh, how do you, you make the job and uh, I, your, your country is fantastic. Um, I remember uh, uh, I'm professor of economics uh, in France and associate researcher at the National Institute of Agronomic Research uh, in Paris. Um, and um, I work on um, agricultural cooperative maybe 55 uh, years ago now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I developed research on uh, how the farmers join together, how they develop collective action um, in order to produce and compete on in market, international market, but also how they reorganize the supply chain and the value chain in order to develop their production, but also to develop the sustainability and uh, how they can govern and develop the a better governance of their for their members. So uh, I am a member of the, the IC board for developing research. And uh, I, I met uh, Elena Garnaska, she's a professor in my university. Uh, and um, at the, during a, um, a stay in the uh, US, uh, working with uh, Professor Michael Cook, that um, uh, is very well known here, um, developing relation with Frontera, in order to better know how cooperatives in the world are functioning and how we can support farmers in order that they, they develop their competitiveness. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and as you say, you know, we've got some fantastic professionals um, at university or academic um, level here in New Zealand, uh, but we always need more. So um, it's great to have you on our shores. So just in terms of um, Europe, can you share a little bit more with us in terms of the industries that apply the co-op model in Europe and some of the similarities and differences to how you've seen it being applied here in New Zealand? Mm. Yeah, New Zealand faces uh, a number of challenges, producing and developing its agriculture and food industry, respecting environment, innovation and exporting, that you are very uh, huge uh, exporter, for, for example, in, in wine or, or in dairy industry and kiwi industry, food. So cooperative action enable uh, um, to meet these challenges by working together. And however, uh, we need to know how to better work together and to be more competitive. So I would like first to give you a better idea about the importance of the cooperative model in the world because it's increasingly developed in, in Europe and it represents a significant part of European industry. So just um, let me give you some figures to put things into perspective. I am referring uh, to the World Cooperative Monitor that's which uh, the ICA reference for data. And um, the World Cooperative Monitor raised um, that the economic size and the sustainability of cooperative and mutual around the world is increasing more and more. 
and they give the opportunity to perform the sector on the global scale. So, for example, in this um, last publication, they account to 250,000 cooperatives in the world. That's mean 5 million employees and uh, 141 million of members. That's huge. That's very interesting that uh, we can see in the top uh, 30 companies in the world, Europe have uh, 168 companies and France 40, 42. And in Asia, it's uh, 41 with uh, five in New Zealand, very famous in the world. So the most representative sector for cooperative model, it's insurance, but also agriculture and food accounting for 34% respectively. So in terms of turnover, the production cooperatives represent 42% and mutual um, 88%. So regarding this key figure, we can see that um, uh, cooperative model is a very a poor, powerful model. And if we focus on agriculture and food sector, we um, include a lot of uh, um, enterprise in the world for in all sectors, fishing, uh, dairy industry, meat industry, a lot of um, uh, value chain are, are engaged. And for example, the um, Frontera is number eight in the global uh, monitor top. So uh, in Europe, you have um, uh, 20, um, a lot of cooperatives that they are structuring the food chain. For example, you have more than, uh, um, the market share are very important and you have more than 50% uh, uh, in dairy industry, uh, in uh, wheat, in uh, beverage. So I'm not really familiar with the um, cooperative uh, sector uh, in New Zealand, but what I know is that uh, it's uh, very different between the, the, the model, cooperative model in New Zealand and in uh, Europe. For example, in Europe, you have different legislation about cooperatives. In some countries, like such as France or Spain or Germany, you have specific law for cooperatives. So you have cooperative statutes, which give you rights, but also obligations. And in other countries like Netherlands, in fact, enterprise decide, decide if they prefer to adopt a commercial statute or a cooperative statute. It's based on the enterprise declarations. However, uh, all these enterprises operate uh, according to cooperative principles. That is very important to better understand that the way to develop an enterprise, a cooperative enterprise, is based that a shared ownership between members and democratic decision making. That is um, the two main principles that, that you can find in all over the world. So the unit nation, for example, this year recognized that cooperatives and you're usually the unit that we call social solidarity economy, um, develop a real efficient economy and the capability to contribute to achieving the objective of sustainable development. So to be short, I would say that cooperative uh, are uh, enterprise, competitive enterprise to survive on the market, make benefits, but in the same time, they provide services to their members. And that's very interesting because they are different from commercial enterprise. Commercial enterprise, they just make profit and uh, that's it. But for cooperative, they have to give benefits, survive in the market, but in the same time, to develop uh, benefit for their member. And if I, I look to, I give you more um, information on France, uh, let me check just a few points. Um, we have more or less 2,100 French cooperative, agricultural French cooperative. That means that they bring together three out of four agri um, farmers. They own one uh, in uh, out of four free brands. And they produce, 
that's very important for, for, for her and for you too, uh, one out of two bottles of wine. That's a lot and it's including spouting wine, but it's very, very important. We have 700 cooperatives certified organic and uh, we employ uh, more than 119,000 people in France, but also around the world. So cooperatives are very important structuring supply chain and value chain for product, for food, but also for non-food products. And um, in France, they consider that cooperatives are very traditional because uh, uh, they respect the ICU principle. That means ownership uh, by a member only. But um, we are committed in their activities and uh, they are apply the democratic principle one person equals one vote. So the specificity of uh, French uh, cooperative agricultural crops it are developed in, uh, into a um, strong and powerful group. That means that they um, are more and more uh, um, controlled commercial company. And uh, the, the, the main, the main uh, challenge is how they farm, uh, keep the control of the group <laughs> and how they can develop in a cooperative way. And for example, if we compare to, uh, to the States, the France, we have only one cooperative statute. Our, um, whereas in uh, America, we have seven statutes. So it's very interesting to learn how they, they manage their cooperative and how they can improve the competitivity of the cooperatives. So I say that for give you a picture of the, the importance of the cooperative model for, for, for the world and for New Zealand too. Yeah, it's really interesting what you're saying about the piece of legislation that you've got, because obviously in New Zealand, we've got five mm. different pieces of legislation, yeah. but the main one is the Co-op Companies Act, which is quite broad. Um, I, I like the fact that in France, you've got a whole lot more um, uh, viticulture, <laughs> winemaking co-ops. I think we need more in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. You, um, uh, during the, the conference, we have a, a, a CEO of the, the chairman of the first, the only one wine co-ops in New Zealand. It was great. Yeah, he's, uh, that's Mike Brown, who's actually the chair yeah. of Cooperative Business New Zealand. So a very interesting story in terms of their sustainability journey. Yeah. journey, journey. Um, I guess in terms of the European co-ops, we talked a little bit, a bit about the industries. Um, there's also the other side of co-ops in terms of how they construct, whether they're employee-owned or supplier-owned or consumer-owned, and what applications look like in terms of commercial versus social enterprises. The majority of co-ops here in New Zealand are some of our most successful commercial businesses. So it'd be interesting to understand the nuances in France in terms of the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the ownership structure and then in terms of commercial versus um, social enterprises. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I think the, the fact that the world is going through an, uh, an unprecedented crisis linking to climatic change and the increase of economic and social inequalities um, underline the, the power of the, the cooperative in all the sector, housing, consumer, retail, food, transport, every, everywhere, cooperative make great job. So um, in France, we have, uh, and in Europe in particular, we have also the um, Ukraine conflict. Actually, we increase the pressure um, on uh, the energy sector, for example, so the, the world is, uh, is changing and it's in need to change. And so we need solidarity more than over. And faced with this uh, catastrophic uh, economic, but also environmental and social situation, cooperative and mutual are continuing to develop. That's be sure. And um, if I, uh, I give you a, a broad picture in terms of uh, European strategy, uh, for example, in, uh, in Europe, we have the European Green Deal that set uh, how to make the Europe first climatic neutral continent by uh, 2015. 
It's map a, a new sustainable and inclusive growth strategy to boost economy and to improve people's health and quality of life, care of nature, and leave um, no one behind. That's very important because uh, uh, in different country, democracy uh, is in difficulty. So uh, the, the Europe adopt, um, want to develop sustainable food, food uh, support for food system, for example. And so they developed the farm to fork strategy uh, at the heart of the Green Deal and uh, address some, it first address uh, comprehensive uh, challenges. It's the reason why uh, they put different sector also uh, in, uh, with uh, uh, agriculture. It's not only uh, the food sector, but it's also uh, over um, uh, sectors uh, in relation with uh, healthy people, healthy society, healthy planet. And um, we develop also enfin, the commission uh, agenda uh, want to achieve the sustainable uh, development goals. And so they uh, think about uh, um, support the um, digitalization and the sustainability twin transitions. That means that in fact, they reorganize the way to support enterprise and people. They try to have a, a, a complex holistic approach to help uh, enterprise to achieve uh, the sustainability goals. So uh, for social economy, they develop an action plan in order to uh, create the bridge between different sectors and to support also the, um, the, the enterprise with new funds, uh, new policy, new initiative. And for example, for sustainability, there we have um, uh, global certifications uh, from ISO, uh, environmental and management system, but also uh, we have a lot of um, uh, initiative to um, increase the corporate sustainability reporting directive in order to show how cooperative and how enterprise can better uh, achieve and can better do um, things. So if I give you just an example for, for cooperative, um, I can say that in fact, they combine, uh, that's mean uh, uh, labeling for uh, corporate social responsibility, how enterprise can be more responsible and so this labeling, it's uh, developing by at the European level in order that uh, every company can improve and develop the social responsibility in environment, social and economic. So it's very important that all these uh, enterprise develop uh, a good practices to be more responsible. You can have also a green taxonomy or extra financial reporting. You have a lot of things organized in order to pave the way uh, for the for the um, uh, sustainability goals. But you have, you have also the science-based target initiative uh, for reduce the emission of um, of uh, greenhouse emission. Uh, and for example, you have cooperative that did decide, they explain how they can reduce uh, the direct impact, indirect impact, and what's by their activity, they develop a community and supply chain more responsible. No, I just, I'm intrigued because um, here in New Zealand, um, we've got a farm to plate strategy, which is called Hei Wakanoa. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole purpose of that is looking at achieving those sustainable development goals. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting what you're saying in terms of support from government. Um, it tends to be very business driven here with the government suing back, uh, which is quite challenging. Um, so, you know, we'd love to see a little bit more investment from the government to support um, delivery of more of those outcomes. But, you know, it's, um, as you say, um, in France and here in New Zealand, um, co-ops are very powerful, um, strong, powerful group, um, and in particular in the agri-sector, just being yep. such a major main player. 
So, yeah. So in, in terms of um, changes you're seeing in the co-op and mutual space in Europe, do, do you think it's growing or shrinking? I think you said it was growing. Yeah, yeah, much, much. Because in fact, um, um, working together, it's the best way in order to uh, achieve this, uh, these goals because it's very uh, costly. You need a lot of money, you need a lot of competency, you need to win over the generation. So uh, working together, it's, it's a good way to, um, to achieve that and to, um, to support the, the, the way to change the supply chain and to reorganize the food sectors. That's very, that is very important for, for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we're definitely seeing growth here. I mean, I would get probably one or two inquiries a week about establishing a co-op to yeah. solve a problem. And so I, to your point about collective thinking, that's the only way we're going to make the change if we all come together to work together. So, yeah, I think the timing's absolutely spot on. So it'd be really good, Mary Line, to just gain some insights and lessons into how sustainability can be better implemented here in New Zealand based on what you heard at iPharma. Mm -hmm. And what are the European co-ops and mutuals response to their sustainability journey? Uh, have you got any examples on the approach and priority and speed of change? Mm, for example, uh, we have uh, um, a cooperative, uh, a cooperative uh, in Sugar Beet. Uh, they decide to reduce the, the greenhouse uh, gas emission by 20% by ton of Sugar Beet. And uh, is energy consumption by 8% by ton. So it's a lot. And so um, they decided to reorganize the factory and the organization, the supply chain. And uh, they give, uh, um, they become a leader of decarbonization of these sectors. So they reduce the um, uh, greenhouse emission by 25% uh, in 2020 in saving uh, uh, 2,060 million tons of CO2 or of uh, gas. And so they invest a lot in innovation technology. They encourage the logic of circular economy and biomass production. That means that in fact, uh, cooperatives have a lever to change the reorganization of the supply chain. And in this way, they can improve uh, the competitiveness economic, but also environmental and sustainability. And so it's very, um, I think it's very important because um, um, I know that uh, New Zealand uh, was uh, in the never strange for that. Cooperative can be a powerful lever for action. And we know uh, also that, uh, for example, you have a, a very uh, great uh, um, researcher uh, in New Zealand uh, like uh, Elena Garneska in order to better know the model. Because when you better know the model, you can help the uh, people to do better. You have to training members, but also uh, training employees and uh, develop support, specific support for cooperatives. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying about the education space, because I know in New yeah. Zealand, we really struggle to get um, co-op education incorporated into mainstream education in terms of law, accounting, yeah. business. And so, which is crazy given that 18% of New Zealand's GDP by revenue. So we're mm -hmm. working really hard with Alina yeah. and Professor Nicola Shadbolt to yeah. see how do we actually get that into the business schools as opposed yeah. to just into the agri-science programs. And it's a great issue for, for Europe. Actually, we will organize network between a researcher an enterprise in order to give specific um, teaching or specific research for co-ops and for yeah, young and that, and I think the unfortunate thing here in business schools is it gets mentioned as an alternative model, mm -hmm. which is not helpful because it's one of our most successful. So we're on a journey for that, and that's where it's really great working with the international academic community such mm -hmm. as yourself. I thought what you said about reorganisation of supply chain is really interesting. And I think that's a really big step change for a lot of these businesses. Yep. And it's interesting, um, going back to Mike Brown um, with his role with uh, the Marlborough Grapes Grow Growers Co-op, yep. what they've started doing is that they're shipping the wine in the mm -hmm. barrels 
yeah. and then bottling and market. Yeah. So they're not having to import the glass to then export it back again. Um, so it's taking that whole step out of the supply chain. So it's a really good example of where yeah. we're starting to get there, but it has to be done on mass. So um, yeah, I, I really like that. So um, you mentioned before that the government is getting involved how is the government supporting um the french uh co-op community uh, is there any specific funding or specific regulation that has been put in place mm. um you have to know first that uh, in fact uh, the um, when you are cooperative uh, agricultural cooperative in france you don't don't pay um, the tax for the your activity because farmer pay the tax, but and at the same times the subsidiaries, the low subsidiary pay the tax, but not the corps. And so uh, the government try to support a cooperative uh, by this type of uh, exoneration. It's good in uh, one way because uh, it recognizes the effort and the obligation of cooperative to support farmers. That um, commercial law don't have this uh, obligation. But in the same times, for example, they are not allowed to have um, funds or support for innovation. That makes no sense. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, the government uh, decided to law to support farmers in order to have a better price, because actually uh, the supply chain is uh, unbalanced in favor of uh, the retail sectors that push a lot farmers that don't pay very well. And so the, the, the law try to rebalance that in favor of the farmers and so helping cooperatives. Yeah, so here in New Zealand, it's quite interesting because um, in a similar vein to France, they, um, the farmers pay the tax on any profit redistribution yeah. um, and the co-op only pays tax on the, any profit that they retain within the business. Yeah. Um, and to your point about um, government funding, so that the great thing with the co-op companies act here in New Zealand is you can have up to 40% investment from external parties. The challenge is if those external parties aren't philosophically aligned with the co-op model, that's yeah. when it will end up um, demutualizing. So we are trying to talk more and more to the government about doing PPPs in that um, public and private sector to support mm -hmm. um, multiple business business communities to really increase the um, you know the value and the opportunities that they provide um, in terms of proving lives and livelihoods within some of our lower socioeconomic group, um, communities as well. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but yeah, as you say, there's there's challenges there. So based on having gone to the conference and everyone that you met. Is there any potential areas of untapped opportunity here in New Zealand that you think we should be considering? Hmm. I think you have uh, huge challenges because uh, uh, you are an island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm native from an island too in France, you know. I'm Corsican. So uh, my island is in, in, the, in the Mediterranean Sea. And I, I know that the problem is all the time uh, the transport. How you manage that? And you, you give an example on the wine industry. It could be exactly a way to find solution in order to um, uh, reduce uh, transport costs. And uh, yeah, um, I'm very impressed by your your landscape. It was uh, it is uh, fantastic um, to see how you maintain your sustainability and uh, how you develop activities. We, we were yesterday in a um, winery uh, in uh, around the Christchurch. Church. Uh, very interesting uh, on uh, organic uh, wine. Um, I suppose that uh, you have, uh, um, as you say, uh, strength and uh, assets to put uh, because you are sustainable, you can uh, produce a, a, a dairy industry. And Fronta is a good example that is success to be uh, to become a leader in the world. Uh, so I think the the fact that you are an uh, island is not um, uh, redhibitory. You you can success. 
uh, I suppose that more and more you join uh, activity uh, on circular economy, more and more you can produce um, food and uh, produce also energy. You can also um, develop sup sustainable supply chain in order to produce for you, but also to export and to um, to have to have a good deal that as you 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 did in uh, China, uh, in order to uh, yeah to win market share. I think the the way to to work on cooperative and collective action could be a, a very um, uh, powerful uh, strategy uh, for New Zealand. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying there because um, we're talking to NZT, which is the New Zealand Trade and Enterprise Scheme, mm -hmm. and they are working with exporters. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I see is that we could do so much better in terms of telling our co-op story to the world mm -hmm. because I think that yep. whole piece around collaboration is so key. And so there's conversations underway, don't you worry. And I think your comment about us being an island, yes, it is um, challenges, challenging. Yeah. It creates a number of challenges, but it also um, enables a number of opportunities that we can really tap into yeah. in terms of pest-free, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's how do we get that collaboration going? And a lot of our bigger players are actually working very closely together in terms of their freight into the international market, which has yeah. been really successful. Yep. So COVID's actually forced a lot of that, which has been a really good outcome. So no, that, thank you so much for sharing with us your ideas and thoughts. In terms of, before we wrap up, have you got any other thoughts, uh, Mary Lyon, that you'd like to pass on? Yes, if I can, yes. I would like to say that um, cooperatives are very particular model of enterprise, but very fantastic. Very fantastic because they, they increase uh, the way to, for, for people, to be sustainable, but in, in uh, for planet and people, and in fact, you may you combine economic, environment, and social, and that's it's very important, and it's also important that uh, in fact it's the economic model of the future. <laughs> they are all enterprise, but it's very new for future and very important. Um, but in the same times, I would like to say that uh, we need to be aware on their specific characteristic because um, uh, it's very important to educate young people leaders members um, in order to that they remain in capability to decide their own direction um, you have to keep the power inside the enterprise and uh, not to give the opportunity to other enterprise from uh, Australia, for China, for America, to arrive and to decide for you what you want to produce, what you want to eat, how to feed people and, uh, and, uh, and uh, energy. So it's very important, I think, to develop research on cooperative, to have figures also, to know how they develop, and also to, um, to work on the speci specific indicators. That is very important to measure the added value of cooperatives, which is different from the um, company governed by com com um, commercial law. And I think it's very important. It's a challenge for Europe, and I'm sure that it's a challenge for you. And we can work together in order to find solutions for a better world. So thank you very much for your invitation, and thank you for all the job that you made. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, hopefully for those of you who are listening to this uh, recording, um, you found it useful and there's a whole lot of learnings that we can take from our European counterparts. And we wish you all the well. Kia kaha. Kia kaha.